So today is the 26th of February, 2021. And the time now is just after midday in London. Um, that's GMT, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow, Saturday the 27th, 16 minutes past 8 and 29 seconds, there's going to be a full moon in Virgo. Now, clearly, Virgo is an Illuminati sign. Virgo is the hidden hand sign. I'm not saying... Yeah, I mean, the Bavarian Illuminati started in 1776 and Virgo was very, very um, prominent. And also, um, in 1776, we have to remember that America gained their independence. Two important things happened in 1776. That's a very important year. Astrologers should look at those times. Anyway, they love Virgo, not least because it comes at around... The end of Virgo starts the beginning of fall. And fall is a very, very important period. When the um, sun, when it rises, it rises below the ecliptic, the equator line. Yeah, people don't really understand astrology because we have we have the sun in the center of the universe like that. And then we have the earth that goes around the sun. You know, sunrise and sunset, the sun doesn't rise in the east and then come over like that. The sun is in the middle of the solar system and we, we travel around the sun like that. But not only that, we, each day, we spin on our axis all the way around, 24 hours, boom, one day, and we move one degree around the sun. We spin 24 hours around, spin around, and we go around the sun like that. Also, so... We're, the sun's there, and we're, here. we're only tiny, we're just a little dot like that. The sun's, the sun's there, and we're the dot. But I'll put Earth as being big like that for the minute. Because not only that, the pole goes through our Earth. And every time we spin on the axis once, and move a little bit around the sun, spin 24 hours, because remember, at midday, say this is Britain, we're facing the sun. Then 12, 12, 12 hours later is night time and we're away from the sun. But what is actually happening as we turn and move around the earth? We are in spring. The, the equinox is fully straight like that. But every day as we spin and we turn, it's leaning in like that. And it leans in from April to June, the summer solstice, where because it's leaning in and it's closer to the sun, that's the hottest time. When it gets to the solstice, it starts going back that way, straightens up, till the end of Virgo, when it comes to Libra. And then it starts to lean away. And... Lies the seasons. I can't explain anything properly these days. Because it's very, very, actually quite depressing. The, 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 the people have just given up all their rights, everything. I just like to make the point that Virgo, we've got this Virgo new moon, and we need to be. It, it, Virgo, obviously, we know Virgo can be OCD, very pedantic, very military style, clinical, clean, tidy, health, you know, organic, and and stuff like that. 
Virgo likes to help. It's a sign of service, you know, and it does it very, very well. But the key word is order, routine, and ritual. And if you haven't got your ritual sorted out under lockdown, and you just sat there waiting for us to come out of lockdown when everything's normal, you're going to go insane before before we come out of lockdown. You're absolutely going to be coming insane. At this time, it's a good time to do a spring clean. And we have to understand that when we do a spring clean in the house, it kind of like, it reflects into your, it comes from, it, you know, as you're cleaning the house, your house, that cleaning thing that you're doing, it it does. It's as if you're cleaning your whole world. It is. If you clean up the whole house, you know, you feel much better. And this is the time to do your rituals. Make sure you have a very structured day. I'm watching Mark Windows, and Mark Windows is talking about strategy, and that is my strategy. We must have routine and order, know what we're doing, but at the same time, remember, we live in a dual world, and you have to approach, your strategy has to be one, uh, that one that compensates for this duality. Like, if you're going to say, I wouldn't do this with actually taking the vaccine, because I'm adamant that I'm not going to take the vaccine. That's complete insanity. You know, it's absolute insanity to say that you're going to take that vaccine. But say, for example, like mask wearing, like I've never worn a mask. But we have to be spontaneous and be aware. You know, if you had to wear a mask, if I had to wear a mask for some reason, I don't know, that might be quite important. I can't imagine what, what that would be. But we have to be able to say, yeah, OK, uh, uh, you know, I'll just put a mask or something and and, and not feel that we've betrayed ourselves or, or you know you know this is the strategy be rigid create routines rituals and do them but at the same time we must be living in the now where we can be spontaneous and do something totally random that might even contradict everything that we're about or everything that we've done in the past, you know. And we've got to be prepared to do that because it's no good saying, oh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, you can't. You have to live in now and be spontaneous. So on the one hand, we're getting up every day, you know. We're doing our yoga and our, and our working with our weights, you know. We may be, you know, fasting until midday, you know. Or, you know, if you're really good, you can fast until four, you know. And then we're only going to eat within a certain time frame during the day say you decide to just guzzle down as much food as you can between four in the afternoon and eight because in, in fasting fasting is the way any healing you want to do you know anything that your a doctor would never diagnose me of anything because i've never been to a doctor in 10 years you know and before that i'd already stopped but say for example you got diagnosed that your dead diabetes count was whatever off the roof of or if, even if you're going through something like one of those autoimmune diseases, like those really bad ones, multiple scler sclerosis and, you know, Crohn's or, 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 or even cancer. Your best way to come over, get over these things, because we can give you protocols, natural health protocols to do it. People don't like to stick to them. That's why they don't get through them. And this is one that they wouldn't like to stick through. But if you had cancer now, stage two, three, four cancer, no matter what it is, you know what your best bet is? Um, go on a fast. And I mean a water fast. Jesus is said to have done it 40 days in the wilderness, 40 days of fasting. That would be it. It's good. Um, what am I waffling on about? 
So we develop our rituals to help us. They keep us strong. And you can call down wherever you like. Look how many wonderful personalities have gone in the past. I'm not really into worshipping personalities. But I pay them respects, you know. Ganesha, pay respect. Of course, Ganapati. Um, Lord Shiva, that's the Hindu ones. My people probably don't, well, people know I'm into Egypt, so they will know that I'm into Thoth, you know, and Hermes Trismegistus, you know, and read, I read, I'm not brilliant with reading, but the Emerald Tablets, now listen to the Emerald Tablets, you know, um, I listen to the Rig Veda, them chanting those holy mantras, I don't even know what's in the Rig Veda, but I, I recently Listen to some translations. The Rig Veda is very interesting. Wonderful hymns. I'm trying to say that we need to develop a routine, structure, order. This is how we overcome it. But at the same time, and we stick to this religiously. You know, we are supposed to stick to this religiously, but at the same time, be spontaneous. So that's the nature of the duality. And everything in the world is dual. Because we talk about, and, and you know, the powers that be want us to sacrifice our soul and everything for the collective. This is just a scam, you know, this, this thing about, oh, uh, you know, how wicked you are, the, your actions are um, killing granny. <laughs> It's so much nonsense, like, absolute nonsense. My actions are killing Granny and I don't love Granny. And they get away with saying that. And clearly they've killed so many older people. And even, I can't understand how people don't look at the adverse effects after people have taken the vaccine already. Two months this vaccine's been out. And you'd be surprised to know, I know a lot of people, I don't know people, I don't know. But you have to check it out. People are dying 10 minutes after they've taken this vaccine. And remember, if you die tw within 28 days of being tested positive, and in some cases 60 days of being tested positive of anything, they're going down. As a COVID case, you died with COVID and it's written down. This is, um, you know, and yet, yeah, and they'll say within 28 days, he, he was tested positive for COVID with a test not testing for the bloody virus, that PCR test. Everything about this is ridiculous. This is why I can't even be bothered. It's just such a joke. It's an absolute joke. What, what's going on? And the people who just sat down watching the BBC, clearly the BBC are just pure evil, and they're just run by pure evil. I mean, there's no debate or no argument, you know, and whoever it is that they're, they're employing, you know, they might seem human. That's what I mean. We're looking at them. This is the point that Ike was making. We're looking at them, and they look human. Those people on 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 Radio Four, those presenters, I haven't watched it in ages. They look very human. You know, those people in the politics, even people like in Canada, Trudeau and all that. You should look into these people. The leader of the Labour Party. What's he doing in the Labour Party? He's a bullion boy. He's one of them bullion club people. You know, skull and bones, all of them. Those secret societies. And those secret societies, I made the point before, secret societies aren't secret because you're not supposed to know about them. We all know about the secret societies. I think that's why the dumbass people think to themselves, oh no, the secret society is rubbish, we know. Oh, the uh, the Freemasons came on Radio 4 the other day and they, they assured us categorically, you know, that they're, they're, they're just working for the people. And the point is, if you're, for, if, you're, if you're a third degree Mason, 
and there's at least 33 degrees, there's 100 degree masonry degrees, incremental degrees. If you're a three degree mason, you probably are going on very nice. You think you're in the club, you, you get helped out in your business and stuff. But these secret societies are called secret because they hold secret knowledge to do with magic and how the universe works. They have secrets. If you think your iPhone and your Android, because many people have their both iPhone and iPad, they don't even use 1% of that iPad. They just think it's trendy to have it and they know it can do wonderful things and it's all great. But that iPad technology you've got in your phone is nothing compared to what they have. And as I was saying, I'm just thinking of John F. Kennedy in the 1960s. Because this battle has been going on, obviously it's been going on centuries since the time of Jesus. Because this is why they crucified Jesus. Because Jesus was um, shedding light on these archons. That's what the Essenes called them, you know. We have the Nagamadi scriptures. It's all there. We have the Apocrypha. Does anybody, I wonder if anybody watching this and I say, yeah, or oh, you should read the Apocrypha. I wonder if people even know what the Apocrypha is. You know, it sounds all very grand. I remember when I was growing up, Apocrypha, it sounds really cool. The Apocrypha are all the books that King James said, no way is this going in the Bible. We can't have the people seeing it. And there's so many scriptures, Nagamadi, the, um, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, you know, the Pyramid Texts. I mean, there's texts galore all over the telling us, and, and we don't know. But the Sumerians, you know, the Sumerian texts from Babylon, Iraq and Iran and all that. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous what we're going through. Because all the knowledge is there. And what was it in the Nagamadi scriptures? The archons, yeah, they speak about this, this off-grid force. If you think, and Ike made the point as well, you know, we are but a tiny... I mean, look at my finger. Look at my hair, my dreadlocks. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, planet Earth is about... What did Ike say? About one... It might be a billionth. In comparison to the whole universe, planet Earth is one billionth of the tip of the air compared to the grand universe. And you want to tell me, I've made this point before, but not as eloquently as David Icke did, that um, we are tiny, nothing in the universe. You want to tell me that we're the only intelligent beings. But the point is, we're not even intelligent. <laughs> Oh, we're going, this is, to me, this is so funny, actually, it really is, you know, <laughs> it's a joke, so yeah, there is this archonic force out there, that's keeping us down, but, but, I mean, Jesus taught ascension mechanics, and I was speaking, you know, and you can go to, because colontic science, as far as I'm concerned, that's the best thing that I've seen in all my studies, all the years that I've been doing this. And what's her name? Ashayana Dean. Yeah, she's fantastic, the stuff she's downloaded and presented for us about the mechanics of the universe. And the history of the universe. If you don't know the book Voyagers, you know, people don't know Voyagers. You should read Voyagers because you can't say, oh, that's a load of nonsense. You just can't. You can't say, oh, she just made up a little 
story there, that's all mythology. Because it's it's really detailed, shockingly well detailed and stuff. And it goes in, you know, Atlantis, Lumuria, all the different and people like to get into this thing about their air Aryans are white people and all that kind of stuff and we're Aryan and you know I noticed the Hindus like to in Indian people today they jump on that we're Aryan you know and we know that the Irish and white people and it and Hitler is meant to be Aryan but Aryan is just the time period Atlantean Lumerian is just the time period that we're going through not actual races. We are different races. There are different races throughout the universe. We have the Syrian people. We have the Elohim. We have people from Andromeda, Arcturians. And they're on different also as well because our creators apparently, they come from the fifth dimension because it's not just, apparently, how we were created, human beings originally, I don't, you know, and don't take me so literally, but the point is, I'm trying to make is, this is according to Voyagers. Fifth dimension, Elohim, Lyrans, I think, from Lyra, would have got together with the Syrians. And the Syrians are from Sirius and stuff, who are lesser beings because they're on a higher dimension, the Lyrians, Lyrans, whatever, fifth dimension. Syrians are on a lower dimension, higher than us at the moment. And they got involved in a project to create us and all the different races. And we're meant to be here to help Mother Earth ascend. Because another thing as well, we've been, this universe has been going billions and billions of years. We've been through, you know, extinction and regrowth and all that, you know, it's just, oh man. So what do I do? What do we do? What's going to happen? I don't even bloody know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do or what the outcome is gonna be. I really don't. I'm just saying you need to have your rituals sorted out. <laughs>